I'm back today with my Land Rover Defender and in my hands is the number one tool that any Land Rover Defender owner should have. On the outside of this box it says ID Tool Bluetooth G4 and the G4 is really important. This is what is generally known as a gap tool for Land Rovers and Range Rovers. I've been wanting to get one of these for a long time but the previous versions did not do what I really wanted to do. And now with this new G4 version, it has unlocked a lot of really cool tools. And this thing does exactly what I need on my Defender. The way this tool works has an ODB2 connection and Bluetooth. It does also have a USB connection here, but I only use it with Bluetooth on the app on my phone. So simply plug it into the ODB2 connector on the underside of your dash. The lights will light up and blink a couple times. When you first connect your phone, you will have to go through a registration and setup process. The GAP tool can only be paired with one single Land Rover. You can also pay a fee for each additional Land Rover that you want to connect it to. So I'm going to connect to my tool down here on the bottom. It's now looking for my VIN and it will connect to the truck. This is the main screen of the GAP tool. Under faults, we can use this as a regular code reader. We can read the codes from all the different computers. We can clear the codes. There's a height adjust option. And here I have programmed these three customizable heights. This works a lot like the lift rods that you can install in your Land Rover, except you're doing it completely by software. What it does is let you put in an offset for your normal lift. So by default, your normal lift offset is zero. If I want a two inch lift, I have it set to 11. Max level lift, and this is with the car being level, I have it set to 28. Highway, I actually have it set to offset to negative four. That will actually lower the suspension a little bit and make the Defender a little more eco-friendly. If you want to change any of these values, just hold down on your customizable setting, and then you can go in there and change these values. You can also change them individually if you want, if you want a rake on your vehicle or if you want one side higher than the other. If we go under height control, we'll give us a warning that the vehicle might change in height. And here you can manually lift up or lower the vehicle. There's a calibration menu where you can calibrate certain parts of the vehicle. Also service tests where you can run a bunch of built-in factory tests. I do like this one, live values. I have found that this shows a lot more values than my standard scan tool will show. So you can go through here, find an ECU that you want to look at, and then it will show you all the different values that that ECU can output. Under live values, you can also create favorite lists. I have made one for my hybrid battery so that I can actually go in here and look at the values we'll turn these on so saying that my hybrid battery pack has 96.5 percent life left it's at 45.98 volts right now so this is very useful information shows you things that a regular scan tool can't then we have car config which is where we're going to spend most of our time today there's also ecu flash ecu info save restore and then configuring your tool let's go into car config going to hit continue and in here i already have set up a bunch of favorite lists of things that i have been experimenting with such as adaptive cruise control park assist dynamic mode we can change the tire roll radius so that we can set it to the different size tires that we're using remembering the start stop tow assist auto brake hold, and terrain response. My Defender is a 2023 P400, and it did not come with adaptive cruise control. That is the number one feature that I wish this Defender had. So let's add that today. If you look here on my dashboard, I do not have the buttons for adaptive cruise control, but actually I do. They're just not lit up. Every Defender has them. You just have to unlock being able to use them. To add adaptive cruise control, I'm going to turn the ignition on, but I do not want the engine running, so I will not have my foot on the brake. Then we are going to go into adaptive cruise control, and I've added these parameters to this favorites list. Multi-CAN 580, Multi-CAN 712, 
and multi-can 809. And beneath that, it shows the current values. I need to change two of these parameters. So on 580, I'm going to set it to ACC with Q Assist fitted. I'll click apply. And under 809, I need to change that to fitted. I'm going to cl click apply. I'm going to click save. And now upload changes. It's going to ask me, do I really want to do this? Yes. Ignition will turn on. Okay, make sure that your battery is charged. You could break your vehicle by doing this. I'm going to hit continue. It's going to make sure that I do have enough battery power. And now it is starting to reprogram the ECUs. This does take a while and your vehicle will turn on and shut off several times. You will also get some errors on the dashboard, but don't worry, that is all normal. You can see the adaptive cruise control now has popped up on my steering wheel. The gap tool has now disabled our start stop button so that we don't accidentally start it and mess up the programming. Now you see that emergency braking assistance is off. That happens when you change certain parameters and update them to your ECUs. That's normal, don't worry, and I'll show you how to clear that. All right, the process is done. I'm going to hit continue. Now my vehicle has adaptive cruise control. I'm going to turn the vehicle off. And now if I were to start the engine, you can see we still have the emergency braking assistance error on the screen. To get rid of that, just turn the vehicle off, hop out, lock your vehicle, leave it for a few minutes, unlock it and turn it back on and that error will be gone. I think what is happening is when it is programming some of the ECUs, they need to be turned off completely before they can realize those changes. Yeah, so once you've left your vehicle locked, all the ECUs will shut down and they will restart and everything will be fine again. I've let the vehicle sit for a second, so now let's turn it back on. And we'll notice that the errors have gone away. If you take away any advice from this video, this is the most important thing. When you get your gap tool, go into car config and let it read the values. This will read the current values that are programmed into your vehicle. And then go down here and hit the share button and email yourself what all of your values are right now. That way you'll have a record of what all your factory values were set to in case you get something changed and you lose a feature because you have something set wrong you can always go back and look in your email and it will show you all the values that are programmed into your vehicle so before you go in and make any of your favorite lists and change anything click that share button email yourself all the values and then you can always go back and look at it i have found that that's also a good way to search through all the values in your vehicle if you're wanting to change something you may be able to just search for the text value find it and go in there and change it. I showed you what parameters I was changing for adaptive cruise control. I'll show you a few more. Here is park assist. This on some defenders, you can enable park assist, which will let you pull up to a parking spot and it will automatically steer the vehicle and park it for you. No defenders on the road have this currently, unless you have enabled this with your gap tool. Besides adaptive cruise control, dynamic mode is probably the other feature that most people want to enable on their Defender. These are the values that I needed to set for me to enable dynamic mode on my vehicle. So now if I go into my modes button, I have a new mode all the way to the left, and that is dynamic mode. If I select that, my dashboard changes as well to the dynamic mode. This is something that comes with the V8 vehicles, but is not standard on the P400s like I have here. But I think you can enable it in all vehicles. It's basically a race car mode for your Defender or Range Rover. Not really that useful in an off-road vehicle, but if you want that, it's there. This one is not a very big deal for me, but remember start stop. That is for this button down here for stopping the engine when you pull up to stop signs and stoplights. You can have it remember if you have disabled it or not. 
I have that feature turned on so that it will remember that for me, but it's not something that I really needed to worry about. Tow Assist is the only thing on here that I do not have enabled on my vehicle right now, but these are the parameters that you would want to look at if you wanted Tow Assist on your vehicle. I'm not certain on this, but I think you cannot have Tow Assist along with some of all the other modes that I have on this Land Rover, so I think that not all of them can be active all at once. You can see that I have parking mode enabled. So on my vehicle, it will search for parking spots. And when you're driving forward in a parking lot, it'll be using the cameras looking for parking spots and they will pop up to the sides here. You can have it either parallel park you or park you in to a parking space or a garage. So it will show you the spot that it's going to park you in over here and then you'll hit the start button and it will park you. That's gonna be it for today. I cannot recommend the Gap Tool any more highly. This is not a sponsored video. I know that there are different distributors for the Gap Tool in England, as well as there is in the United States. As new firmware for the Defenders come out and people learn more what they can do with the Gap Tool, I'm sure that there will be more things that we want to do with this. The only criticism that I do have of this tool is it gets extremely hot if you're using it for a while. I did have a time a couple days ago that I was playing around with different parameters and I think the tool got too hot and it shut itself down in the middle of me working with it. So that is something of pretty big concern. You would not want the tool to shut down while it's programming your vehicle. So maybe while you're using it, if you're not in the process of actually programming it, turn on your air conditioning blowing at your feet. That way it keeps the tool cool. But I think that about wraps it up today. If I have any changes to what is described in this video, I will post it below. And if you have any experience with a gap tool with your Land Rover or Range Rover, leave that in the comments below so that it may help other people.